Hoy, I'm Joe Slater and I'm the Principal Engineering Mentor at the Royal Wolverhampton NHS Trust. We have created the following video to highlight to you the numerous estates, facilities and engineering careers available within the NHS. At the Royal Wolverhampton NHS Trust, our vision is to be an NHS organisation that continually strives to improve the outcomes and experiences for the communities that we serve. We pledge that we will always strive to be safe and effective, kind and caring and exceed expectations. To help us achieve this vision, we employ over 10,000 staff, making us the largest employer in Wolverhampton. During the video, some of our staff will give you an insight into what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, the qualifications, skills and characteristics required and the different routes into these roles. If you have already decided what career path you want to take, we hope this video will give you a better insight into what the career might look like within the NHS and how to give yourself the best chance of achieving your dream. If you haven't yet decided which direction you want to take, then don't worry, there is plenty of time to decide, but hopefully this video will give you some ideas and maybe even introduce you to a career you never even knew existed. On a day-to-day -day basis my job could be anything from sitting at my desk or going out onto, on, on site um, so I can be testing a CT scanner today and um, writing up the report this evening and tomorrow I could be sat at my desk doing a dose audit for cardiology um, and then the next day I could be going out to an x-ray room um, to commission a new tube so it varies a lot from day to day. So there are a number of different routes into a career in medical physics. The one I chose was a degree in physics um, and then I got a place on a training scheme over here in the UK. It's the National Healthcare Scientist Training Programme. Um, so that's a three-year training programme with an MSc in medical physics and that involves formal training and your MSc and then after that you become a qualified clinical scientist. Um, there are also apprenticeship routes to get into this field. So you need to have good analytical skills and good communication skills um, and a natural sense of curiosity for when things don't quite work out how you want them to, um, to, to persevere and, and to kind of get to the root of the problem and you must also um, know the limits of your own knowledge and not be afraid to ask for help when needed. So the route I took to get into career in medical physics started me off as a band 6 um, trainee clinical scientist. Once I qualified I was a band 7 um, and there is no stopping after that so my next step is to become a medical physics expert and that will be done through experience and um, putting together a portfolio demonstrating the experience over a year since qualifying. Um, there is also other um, development opportunities to become a radiation protection advisor or a radiation waste advisor if you work in nuclear medicine. Um, but really there is no limit to what you can do. Yeah, the best part of my, about my job is that it challenges me. I have a good mix of, of working out in the field and also um, working behind the scenes, uh, offering scientific support to others in radiology. If I could describe my job in one word, it would probably be interesting. Serving food for the patients, um, making sure they get a healthy, balanced meal, cleaning up after service, putting food in, 
probing to make it sure it's hot and general cleaning of the kitchen. Well, just having um, knowledge of catering and serving food and I've worked in um, retail in catering before so um, just having a knowledge of food and making sure the meals are presented nicely and being caring and helpful to patients and staff. We can um, move up supervise the role or you could go on the um, NHS website and advance to other jobs in the hospital. The best part of my job is serving the meals to the patients, making sure they get a good meal and getting to know them and the staff. If I had to describe it in one word it would be nutritional. Well, it varies really on a day-to-day -day basis because on a daily basis I could come in and cook and another day I could come in and um, do catering assistant like cleaning and doing the scramble egg and stuff like that. Yeah, so it varies from time to time. Well, the entry requirement for my job, when I did apply for my job, it was like 19 years ago and I had like my basic food hygiene plus I had food prep, my food prep certificate so that's what I had when I enter, when I apply for my job. The skills and characteristics required is basic food hygiene. If you know your basic food hygiene, that's what required mainly to your job because it's more or less it's straightforward. It looks hard, but once you get into it, it's simple. Well, my job role could lead me to, I could apply if there's a position coming up for like, maybe a supervisor or a head chef, I could apply for that if I wanted to. You know, that's where it could lead you like, and you could branch out into other stuff also, yeah. my job on a whole, it's, it's coming and just like, I'm giving a service and I love doing that. I think that's the best part because I know what I'm doing, it's a service for somebody else, not just for me, but I'm doing something to help somebody get better, like yeah, in my job, within my job. Well, my job is, it's challenging at times, but it is fantastic. My job entails on a day-to-day -day basis, replenishment, cleaning, customer service, The entry requirements for the job, retail experience is desir desirable, but full training would be given. The main skills and characteristics are catering experience, customer service skills, pride in your work, want, want, wanting customers to leave with a smile and happy. Cleanliness of the unit, first impressions matter. Attention to detail. Stocking date, stock rotation, display of stock, tidy shelves. Uh, my role can lead me to various different places, i.e. supervisor, manager, stay within the catering department or move on to something different. I just love it, I love all of it. There's no best part, I really do, I'm not just exaggerating about that. I really do love what I do. Never get the dreaded, oh God, I've got to get out in the morning feeling.
If I could describe, describe my job in one word, it would be fantastic. Day to day basis, my area is Stoke and North Staffordshire. So I've got about 30 surgeries, 35 surgeries. I visit all the surgeries and collect cytology samples and then bring them back to New Cross for testing. Entry requirements are obviously a driver's license. You need five years experience and obviously a clean driver's license. For a start, you need to be able to um, put up with traffic jams, weather conditions, then you've got to be able to patience when you go to the surgery because you will not be, you, you don't get served straight away, you have to wait. And then obviously punctuality, reliability, make sure you transport the samples safely, bring them back, drop them back off at the labs here at New Cross. With the job role, basically, the, the next step is a supervisor and then the next step above that of the department. Meeting different people uh, every day, you out on the road, uh, and obviously getting the, providing the service for the patients. Interesting, enjoy, and enjoyable. That's two. <laughs> I have to um, go to different surgeries and clinics collecting all samples like blood samples, um, microbiology which is urine um, and cytology and also delivering um, stock. The entrance you have to have a full driving licence clean and you can go on to be a supervisor. She'll be able to read a sat-nav um, properly, um, be able to drive in busy situations, keep calm. Could lead to being a supervisor or even management and we get full training for that. And meeting different people all the time. Fun. On a day-to-day -day basis, my job entails helping and supporting 19 supervisors and I also help and support our domestic team. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I help sort out any HR issues, manage annual leave and just generally be like a good open ear and support for all our staff. I didn't have any entry requirements for my job. I started originally as a bank domestic um, and I've worked my way up through experience but I've also undertook quite a lot of courses that have been enabled me to do, the trust have been enabled me to do. I 
think the main skills and characteristics required for my role are good communication, understanding, I think listening, being very supportive and always going that extra mile. Um, I'm currently doing a course at the moment um, which is like a cleaning supervisory course and like I said I did start off as a bank domestic and I've worked my way to a domestic supervisor to now a senior so one day I'm hoping to be manager. The best part of my job is the outcome for instance with the pandemic it's nice to see the number of inpatients going down on a weekly basis and knowing that my team helped contribute to that. To describe my job in one word, I would probably say fulfilling. So mainly my job entails moving patients all around the hospital um, from different wards, taking them for treatments, scans, x-rays and then other duties I could be driving an ambulance, I could be changing oxygen cylinders and general movements of move wards and equipment. There's no standard requirements, so you don't need any qualifications as such. Um, the, the way I got onto the job was through the NHS Jobs website. I think you've got to be a confident person because you're speaking to members of the public, people you haven't met before, so you've got to be comfortable to talk to new people. I think you've got to be kind and caring and considerate and compassionate because there's a lot of poorly people that we deal with um, and I think you've got to be enthusiastic and approachable. So at the moment I'm a porter but you can train to be a supervisor, uh, charge and and then you, that can lead you on to all the management roles. So at the moment I'm currently on a course to do that as well. So I, am, I hope to be a charge and supervisor in the future. I think the best part is um, it's quite rewarding to see that you've helped people um, who have come into hospital and they're not feeling well and you've been part of a team that's hopefully helped them get better and back to a healthier life. Okay, to describe my job in one word, I'd say rewarding. Right, I run a shift of up to about 30, 35 porters. I have to control patient flow through a tele-tracking system that we use on the computer. Um, and I complete mandatory training for the staff, train them to do gas cylinders and all sorts of movements around the floor. There's no particular entry requirements for my job. Um, the sense of hard work does come into it though. Um, what I would say is there are trust courses that we do. I'd recommend that we do them. You get more of an idea how to do a management position then. The main skills and characteristics I'd say are organisation and communication. Organising patient flow they can drop moves on you at any time. You could have to flip bays, flip a whole ward, so we can get a and &E patients up to the wards. So it's my job there to try and manage my staff to try and achieve a goal. My job can lead me into management positions. I'm lucky enough at the moment to be on a university course, which is I've done through the Trust. Um, it's a business management degree and hopefully in the future it'll lead me into management roles.
the satisfaction, I would say, is actually completing the goal. So if I've been given a task and, my te and I set my team a goal, actually completing that goal within a sufficient time and being able to stop breaches and things like that within the trust, it's great. I'd describe my job as fulfilling. I can, uh, I get a sense of fulfillment when I train my staff to the adequate levels that they need to be and things like that. So, yeah, it's fulfilling that stuff. So on a typical day, um, no, no day is the same, we, uh, we carry out um, PPM tasks which is pre-planned maintenance, so that can be anything from emergency lighting tests to fire alarm tests and then also we do reactive work, so that can be anything from a broken socket to lights not working and uh, yeah, we, we respond to that. I have to uh, have an HNC and also for, for the job requirements I needed to go on an HV um, high voltage course and also an LV high voltage course so I'm an AP in them fields as well. You need to have a good mindset, you need to be reliable and enthusiastic. You could progress really well um, and ultimately you be could become um, an estates manager. I have good job satisfaction because it's good to feel as though you've made a difference during the day for the patients. I'm posted at the Boiler House at the New Cross Hospital and uh, without the Boiler House you wouldn't have a hospital. It's the beating heart, um, it provides it the energy needed, it provides it the heating needed, it provides your hot water. If you take the Boiler House out you effectively disable the hospital. This trust actually sent me to university to gain that qualification which allowed me to progress into the role that I'm in now. There's a range of different fault finding to do which you need the technical knowledge to do um, which is why your study is important. Working as part of a team is, is huge. I'm a much more engineering bias on, on some industrial plant. Um, without my colleagues I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what I'm looking at when it comes to uh, electrical uh, type systems we have here which can be very complicated at times. Um, of course we have a range of carpentry, um, building, building services. Um, you need all of these to come together to, to just solve one issue. I've moved up into a few different roles, um, all uh, on the engineering ladder. Um, but the progression don't seem to be slowing down. Um, they allow you to progress, they want you to progress, they provide the training necessary to allow you to. So as long as you're, you're willing, you've got the work effort, you can work, work yourself as, as high up, There's, there is no limit. If you can walk away knowing that something you did that day made a difference to a patient who's, who's receiving care, then uh, that, that fills you with the, with the satisfaction. Working for a public service, you, you get great pension schemes, you get great benefits with your, your holidays, you get great flexibility. So I guess in IT we look after various aspects, um, so we've got a software development team, we've got an application support team, we've got a help desk team, we've got a project management team that looks after all the new projects coming in, 
we've got a security team. So yes, so there's various teams within IT. Myself, I specialise in pathology IT, so I look after the laboratory, so we get results from A&E, from different hospitals. We're doing a lot at the moment with COVID, and we look after all, all the equipment, and we get the lab to call us on a daily basis. We deal with the emails, the queries, third parties, and we provide help over the phone, and, and also in person as well. So a lot of this going out to the labs, seeing what the issue is and resolving those issues. When I first started at the hospital, I worked in the application support team, um, and then, then I also then worked on the help desk, and then into second line, and then I worked also shortly in the server team, and then pathology, IT. So not necessarily do you need a degree, um, you can learn a lot, everything that you do on the, on the role. Experience or work experience can definitely make you stand out, um, and it shows that initiative and uh, the ability to work, because I think within IT, you need to be able to um, communicate with all levels of staff, so um, whether it be a nurse or a doctor or someone else who is technical um, and be able to break that, that jargon down. I think one of the key uh, aspects of the role is communication, to be able to communicate with the people that you're trying to help, being adaptable, uh, being able to work flexible, because the hospital is 24. 24 hours, seven days a week, um, being able to work like bank holidays, um, work on short notice, be able to come in. I've gone from working in procurement in the NHS to working in the application support team and then moving to the help desk um, and then becoming a team leader in the help desk and then moving into second line and then from second line I've moved into pathology IT. So in the, in the course of 10 years, um, my roles changed maybe up to five times and every time I've learned something new. On a normal day, um, it's attend the workshop to see what jobs have been logged. Um, I deal with external contracts, so it could be GPs within Wolverhampton, hospitals, um, mental health hospitals. So if they have a breakdown in equipment or medical devices, they'd log a call and then we'd get the call and then organise our daily basis on where to go first, prioritise, obviously repair the device or maintain the device, return it back to the customer. I started as a, a band three within this department, within medical physics and clinical engineering, which was um, basic of five GCSEs from A to C level. Um, and then I had, while I was here, they seen something in me and decided to develop me. Um, and I went to college for an extra four years while maintaining a full-time job and did an ONC and a HNC in clinical engineering. You've got to be very outgoing and sociable, be able to have customer relations. Um, within the mental health settings that we have, obviously it's the way you um, put yourself forward, um, speaking to different managers, sometimes I'll be patient. As a little girl I loved taking things apart and putting things back together, so to me it's enjoyment of repairing it. Currently, there's um, a great pension within the Trust, so at least I'll have something to rely on in the future, as for when I retire. As you've seen, you don't need to be a doctor to work within the health service. Though we do still need lots of these, there are numer numerous other fields that will be perfect for your skills and interests. Whatever career path you decide to start on, remember to check out the NHS to see what opportunities there are here for you. We look forward to working with you in the future.